Mark, thanks for uh, for joining me here today. Uh, I haven't I haven't had an artist, so this is this is going to be fun, I think. Mm -hmm. And so, what I want to start out with actually is is this very sort of um, naive question, this sort of simplistic question of of one who enjoys art but isn't an artist or a visual artist. And when I go through museums, one of the most common things I hear from from people who are grumbling is that I just don't get whatever it is that's on. I don't get art. I don't get this piece. And and so I want to explore that and, and maybe explore that with some of the some of the prints of yours that mm -hmm. uh, that you brought. So you've got three here today and um, and there some of them are uh, one of them is on your website and the others are are different but they're all in the same sort of form and you know so we've got rabbits and gramophones, we've got rabbits and paper airplanes, we have birds and chairs. And one of the things that I, I I find them about in your artwork is I think I get it. I find it funny. I find it engaging. I find it gently satirical. Um, but then there was another piece called Boats and Ladders, I think. I, and I thought, hmm, I don't know if I get that. Are we supposed to get art? What's, what's, what's going on here? Artwork is made for different people at different times in different places. And so when we look at work historically, we sometimes work transcends time or cultures. So to look at historic work, it's great when it still makes sense. Um, I think so often contemporary work, we feel like was made for us, but maybe it wasn't made. It was made for our time, but maybe not for us specifically. Sometimes you have to have some initiation. And the students think I really like cheese because I talk about cheese that you know, almost everybody's experienced craft single slices, uh, but brie cheese maybe nice, takes nice. an experience to get there. Right. And you, maybe the first time you have it, it's like, that's bitter, I don't like it but you realize it's really nice with pears and almonds. Uh -huh. And so you come back a second time and it gets better. Um, so it's like coffee and beer. Exactly. It's <laughs> something that if you, it, it's, there's a range of experience. And I think artwork frequently is challenging and meant to be challenge, challenging. Mm -hmm. I think f sometimes people approach artwork expecting beauty or expecting a narrative. Mm -hmm. It's the same with music. Uh, think about people listening to music and they, they like the lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they haven't thought about the music that much. It was sort of secondary. The lyrics were the important part. M music that's just sound sometimes is a little, a little more difficult. Mm -hmm. And you, and it, uh, Kandinsky talked about it as a triangle that moves through space. Okay. And that uh, there's a point of the triangle where maybe there's a handful of people that really have the experience to understand it now. Mm -hmm. In 30 years, ah, th that triangle's sure. moving through space and there's a lot more people that suddenly this is part of their experience. Sure. Grandma wearing Kandinsky prints <laughs> on her dress, uh -huh. but you know, at the time it certainly wouldn't have been pu for public consumption sure. or broad public. Okay. So I, I think that uh, art is like that for people to experience and sometimes be challenged and sometimes maybe even be threatened by, mm -hmm. and it's part of the intention. So, so we uh, should be comfortable in the fact that maybe we don't get it all, because then there's something... There, there, something to strive for. There's something to strive for, right. Yeah, there's something more... To, well, the other thing about your artwork that, that I, I, I got from your website, uh, I was going to just throw this out so I sounded very erudite and, and intelligent, but I see that you use non-Western manipulation of space, which, of course, I've stolen from your website. And I had an intuition of what that might have meant. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, well, maybe I'm just brilliant because I, I, I really engage with your artwork. But then I thought, maybe I'm not so clever after all. Maybe you're just onto something that's profoundly both. human, human that, that maybe all people. So, is, is this, so tell me something about this non-Western perspective. I think of myself as very Western, but I find your artwork very engaging. This may be Kandinsky's triangle again. We may have got to the point that that's a part of a common experience, visual experience, culturally. Mm. But we'll get there in a minute and see <laughs> if that's true. Um, Western art, historically, after the Renaissance, was about illusionary space. It was creating this illusion that you could step into. Mm -hmm. um, and in the late 19th, early 20th century, you started seeing artists being influenced by artwork outside of that Western tradition and certainly responding even to the Western tradition of, is that the job of art only to make illusion? Around the same time that photography appears. Mm -hmm. So photography's got a job to document, and maybe the rest of the art world has something else we're supposed to do. And Asian art, Japanese art in particular, started influencing Western artwork in the 1860s, 70s. Mm -hmm. and, and so you see a lot of response to that in the late 19th century. And for me, looking at those Asian traditions and Western traditions that either predate the Renaissance or 
were the modernist traditions or late 19th century traditions that look at Asian artwork to me are really fascinating how you can have this space that I, I believe, I'm convinced by, right. but it's not accurate. Mm -hmm. um, looking at a medieval altarpiece, um, I think one in particular where Mary is sitting at a table, but we're seeing the top of the table too. Picasso would have loved it. And so we're seeing everything that she would have known was on the table. It's not accurate, but it works compositionally in that work, and so I can believe it. I so see. it works as symbol, it works as image, and it's an object, in the case of the altarpiece. Mm -hmm. So looking at those things that can do all of those jobs and do them so simply and so seamlessly is sort of what I strive for in my own work. And so mm -hmm. to know, it's like poetry, knowing when to stop, <laughs> when, and sometimes things that may, maybe it's grammatically incorrect, right. but it, it works to say what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. That's the goal of these, is to have that space where, well, a rabbit looks like a rabbit, or Egyptian artwork I think about, where the fish, I can tell what species of fish it is, uh -huh. but fish only lay on water like that when they're dead. Right. But I understand that that's not what the artist was telling me. They were telling me about the number of fish in the water, and so I was seeing it from above and from below, all at the same time. So that sort of strange space that's possible for me when I draw or make prints, um, that only happens in that work, but if I do it just right, I have you believe that this is really possible in that, in that world, in that environment. And, and this comes out of, out of a, a, both a cultural experience or is there something sort of just profoundly universal? Is there something universal I think about it? I think there might be something universal about it. Um, that's that work that goes beyond a particular time, a particular culture. I think it's tapping into something that's human. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we look at cave art, you know, but, and that's exciting to see how people have used images to communicate uh, maybe beyond or on top of language. Mm -hmm. And so with my work, that's what I hope happens, that it, it goes above and beyond cultures. So I find myself putting myself in cultural situations where I can look at that and experience it. Mm -hmm. How not to colonize it is right. difficult. It's difficult. You know, I, sure. Again, with students, I make jokes that if it's, uh, we can, we bait Chinese food that doesn't exist in China and Mexican food that doesn't exist in Mexico. Uh, so we can, we can steal and, and maybe from other cultures, not borrow, mm -hmm. take it and transform it Ourselves. Um, to understand what's important about that thing that attracts us in another culture mm -hmm. uh, is important. And I think we've, we've always, I think as people we always do that. We oftentimes admire something of another place or culture. I think when you look at these, these are definitely coming from, if, if, a, if somebody Asian or European was to look at these, they'd say, oh, that's American artwork. There's enough that, but mm -hmm. maybe an American sensibility we see that it's influenced or colored by other experiences. Well, you use the word important, so I want to just sort of finish with, I'm going mm -hmm. to give you a pop quiz to finish. Okay. Um, we, we think of, of, of ourselves right now in, in, in terms of history at a very important stage. We have important problems. We have an economic and econ mm -hmm. an economy in recession. We've got global environmental problems. We have political unrest. And so in the face of those, some people would say that art is an indulgence. Mm -hmm. yeah? that what we really need is, is we need answers, we need information, we need science, we need te technology, and, and, and the art can wait. So I'm gonna give you this little quiz here, just one, it's a one question quiz. Can you identify the author of this statement? I am enough of an artist to draw freely upon my imagination. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. I can't, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> the author of that was Albert Einstein. Okay. Um, and so maybe we could just finish by suggesting that in these trying times, maybe we need art and imagination more than ever before, not less. Thanks for, for being with me. Um, and uh, I hope people have an opportunity to go to your website and maybe to, uh, to, to some galleries and other places where, where your art can be seen. Thank, Thank you. you.